opportunity to say uh, Alexander Sergeyevich Nistupayevich Mnyam Rajdini. And uh, for the talk, uh, I apologize for those who have already heard uh, this one, a similar talk. Well, I will start, I will start by some introduction and um, then uh, I will give a list of recent examples of varieties which are uh, proved to be not stably rational and even not retract rational. So these results were obtained by the method using the specialization properties and Chow group of zero cycles. So I will explain this method and I hope this will be the main part of the talk and it will be actually on the blackboard. Uh, and we will discuss more in, in details one example, namely quartic trifles. So let me start by introduction. Uh, well, if you take a field and an integral variety of a field, then you may be interested to know if x is rational or if x is stably rational. Just to recall, this means that a product of x with some projective space is rational. Obviously, one property implies the second one. Or also if x is retract rational. So let's recall the definition by the factorization property. So you want to have an open in X and the risk open as well in some projective space of some dimension and two maps from U to V and from V to U such that the composition is identity on U. So the identity factorizes rationally through a projective space. Well, and all these properties imply that X is unirational. So you may notice that some of these implications are red ones and there is one. Uh, black one. So uh, the red one implications are strict and it's still uh, an open question to know if uh, this, this where, where it is, if uh, the uh, black implication is strict as well. And also all these properties are by rational properties so if you prefer you can define them just by looking at the function field of the variety X. So let me give examples showing that the red implications are strict. Uh, so it will be over the field of complex numbers. Uh, first, uh, so there is a threefold uh, which is stably rational but not rational. So it turns out to be actually a conic bundle. And such an example was produced uh, in the common work of Beauville, Coriotelet, Sansuc, and Sunyator d'ailleurs. Uh, then, also there are examples of varieties which are unirational but not rational. Well, uh, this, it was an open question till 70s, and then three examples um, appeared. So let me just use a notation for now and for the, next, uh, for the rest of the talk. By XD, I will denote a hypersurface of degree D in projective space. Uh, okay, so uh, any smooth cubic of dimension three uh, is unirational, but no one is rational. So this was done by Clemens and Griffiths, who used uh, the intermediate Jacobian criteria. Next, if you look at uh, uh, quartics, also uh, smooth quartic are never rational. This was done by Iskowski and Manin, who used uh, rigidity properties of automorphisms of X. And uh, some of such varieties are known to be unirational, but it is still not known if all of them are unirational and seems to be quite a hard question. Well, and the third example is a, a series of some particular varieties constructed by Artin and Mumford. So these are double covers of P3, ramified along a quartic, with some particular choice of coefficients of the quartic. Let me just make three proper, uh, tell you three properties uh, of this. So this still could be defined over Q bar. And uh, this variety is singular, it has 10 ordinary double point singularities. I will also call them nodes in what follows. Uh, and uh, so the important property is that if you take any resolution, so any smooth and projective variety which is birational to Y, then it turns out that there is a non-trivial torsion in the third beta cohomology of Z, which turns out, turns out in this case to be equal to the Brow group, and, uh, which is non-trivial. And this forces Z to be not retract rational. Okay. 
So now if you are interested in stable or retract functionalities of uh, these two series of varieties, so you see that uh, actually the invariants used to show that they are not rational doesn't, do not allow to understand whether they are uh, stably rational or not. So uh, let me um, uh, now um, give a list of examples of varieties which are not stably rational and then uh, uh, go to the method. Uh, well, uh, uh, Claire Vazan studied um, uh, this series of examples. She was interested uh, in uh, double covers as well of P3, uh, Ormophyatolonic Quartic, and this time with at most seven nodes. So she proved that a very general such variety is not uh, stable rational, not even retract rational. And very general here means that uh, you want to remove a countable number of conditions on coefficients of these varieties. So you move, remove a countable number of closed conditions. Uh, and also, uh, so in the case of uh, double covers with precisely seven nodes, previously it was not even known if such a variety was rational or not. So, so this result is stronger in this sense. Next, in a common work with Carlo Telen, we showed uh, that um, for quartic uh, threefolds, a very general one also is not uh, retract rational. And uh, one can tell more. For instance, there are examples over Q bar. And also, after the work of Tataro, you can also produce examples over Q bar. Over Q, sorry, over Q. Uh, and uh, well, next, uh, Bouville uh, was interested in. Uh, in double covers as well, so of P4 or P5, branched on a quartic again, or of P3, branched on a sextic. Very general, is not stable rational as well. Uh, so Tataro proved that uh, much more hypersurfaces uh, not uh, retract rational, so um, a very general one with these uh, assumptions on the degree. So in particular, if you take uh, N equals to three, so for three folds, then you can make the exercise to see uh, that the cortex um, uh, are again in this list. Uh, also, many conic bundles over rational surfaces, so this time over a field which is algebraically closed, not necessarily of characteristic zero, but just characteristic different from two, uh, are not uh, direct rational. In particular, so uh, I, um, um, I'm not giving a, pre a precise statement, but in particular, you can take a very general conic bundle over P2, uh, and you need uh, the discriminant curve to be reduced, and here you have to take the degree at least six. So this works. So it um, was done by Hassett, Crash, and Chenko. And finally, we were again interested in uh, uh, cyclic covers, uh, this time of prime degree P, and um, ramify it along a hypersurface of some degree, which is divisible by P. And uh, with these conditions uh, on the degree, uh, you can also get that a very general one is not retract rational. Uh, of P uh, N, sorry, yeah, of P N, thank you. Okay, so before explaining the method, let me discuss the case of, yes, Yeah, uh, well, yeah, thank you, yeah. For over C, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's open, yeah, over C. Yeah, thank you. But I meant over C, thank you for, for, for a correction. Okay, so, well, for classifying spaces, consider an algebraic group uh, over a field K, and now I will be more precise about the field. Uh, so, um, you may be interested in this kind of questions, like stable rationality for the classifying space of J, so the way to do it is to consider, as uh, we saw in previous talks today, is to consider some particular G-torsor, which is obtained in this way, when you take an open in some uh, G-equivariant subset in some generically free representation the J, and then you produce a G-torsor like this, and then you say that uh, BJ is stably rational or respectively retract rational if this quotient is. So uh, in this way, you think about the quotient as a variety uh, which approximates BJ. 
And uh, this definition does not depend on the choice of such U and V, and so it makes a correct uh, a definition for BJ. So uh, here's an open question, is uh, if you take a connected algebraic group of an algebraically closed field, uh, so um, is there a BJ which is not retract rational? And uh, so indeed, these two, two assumptions are important because there are such examples with J finite by Southmon and for his K not algebraically closed by Mercurial. Okay, so this is for classifying spaces. Now let's go back to hypersurfaces and see um, what can we do. Uh, so um, uh, I will give a very, uh, a very brief description of the method and then we will see it more in details. So it contains three steps. Uh, so first, uh, well, I wanted to say that for this kind of varieties like hypersurfaces, double covers, well, if you want to um, understand whether such a variety is stably rational or not, so what, what you can do as usual is to find some stable invariants which are supposed to be trivial for like stably rational varieties and then compute for your variety and then maybe find something non-trivial. So among these stable uh, uh, invariants, uh, there are uh, like unramified cohomology groups, or Brow groups, or things like this. But um, it turns out that uh, often um, they give nothing about such um, kind of varieties, so they are trivial, or maybe we cannot understand them. Uh, so this is why we, to get around this problem, uh, so we use the specialization properties. So uh, try to specialize your variety to, to something, uh, and find invariants which are suitable to this. So then you want uh, to, to specialize to something which I call bad, uh, meaning that it has a non-trivial invariance. And finally, so you have your proper definition of uh, interest and varieties, and then uh, probably you want to specialize your interest and varieties to these varieties with non-trivial invariants. Okay. So now I will, um, I will explain this in more details, and let me just tell that for cubics, as usual, the question is still open. Okay. Uh, so now, um, uh, may I have the, uh, uh, yes, close the projector, and I will go to the blackboard. Okay. Okay, so let's consider invariants. Well, to start with, just fix K field and take a proper variety X over K. So because X is proper for you have a um, for Chow group on X of cycles of degree zero, of, of, uh, uh, of zero cycles, then you have a degree map. Guess X is proper. Now, uh, usually the kernel of this map could be huge, but the situation of our interest will be the one where it is actually very small. So uh, I will say that X um, is uh, universally CH0 trivial. So if, so if this map is uh, an isomorphism, but uh, universally, so if I extend these colors to some field extension, it will stay isomorphism. So for any field extension. And here any really means any, so not necessarily algebraic or no, so really any field extension. So at th this point I usually ask if somebody could uh, give me some examples of such varieties. PN, yes. okay, thank you. So it's a, uh, uh, my, my statistics uh, is 100% PN. Uh, and then, 
Oh, that's the first one. So, well, maybe I, I should wait more like, to break down my statistical uh, analysis. Huh? Generalized cross manual. OK, very good. Any? Cellular variety also, OK, understood. People here are very interested in cellular varieties, things like this. Well, uh, according to the definitions I gave before, any uh, stable rational variety actually satisfy this property and the, any retract variety as well. So, so it's a good exercise to understand uh, which properties the rationally connected variety satisfies. Satisfy this property of a C. Yeah. But if I take an extension, then uh, it, uh, it is not true anymore. It could be uh, uh, false. Uh, no, 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 just, uh, it's just that uh, they are equivalence over the extension is not necessarily trivial, even if it's trivial over C, okay? You have many refractional curves, but over C, not uh, if you extend these colors. So. No, no, not necessarily, I mean, it's unclear, okay? So, okay, retract rational. Okay, so now uh, let's consider the relative property. So if I take a proper map of varieties over K, proper map over K, then again I can consider the push forward on cycles between the Chow group and X and on Y, and we say that this map is a universally CH0 trivial. If this map is an isomorphism universally, so again, for any field extension. Okay. So now maybe if uh, you want to relate this property to the previous one and to know how to check this uh, um, universal CH0 triviality for a map. And so the first proposition tells you that actually um, if you know that your fibers are trivial, then the whole space is trivial in the following sense, that if in this uh, definition for any point M, and here M really means any, I mean, in a scheme point, not necessarily a closed point. And actually, the important points here are function fields of curves. Uh, uh, the fiber XM, which uh, we view as a variety over the residue field of M, uh, is universally CH0 trivial. Then the map is then, uh, sorry, I said total space cement map is universally CH0 trivial. So this proposition is, will be useful for us because we will be interested in the situation when uh, this map is a resolution of singularities. And understanding uh, its um, um, fibers uh, means understanding the exceptional devices. And in our case, the exceptional devices will be quite easy, meaning that there will be rational varieties, so unions of rational varieties, so it will be uh, reasonable to apply this proposition. Okay. So uh, these properties of uh, universal CH0 triviality were also considered in works of Merkuriev and also in works of Tataro. And uh, let me first discuss the consequences of these properties and then how to put them uh, into a specialization situation. Okay. Uh, yes. Not necessarily. I mean, I've never said in the... Well, very soon we will pass to k equals to c. But a priori, well, no, it could work just like this. Okay. Um, well, so what can we do? So we take a variety which is um, um, universally CH0 trivial. Well, 
Well, then, because of this property, you have a zero cycle of degree one. And then also, by the way, we are allowed to produce, uh, to take uh, some field extension. So at this point, uh, I usually ask the second question to uh, choose your favorite field extension. Join T. Join T, okay. First time I had this. Okay, next. No, join T. Join CoFX, yeah, it's free site, thank you. So, yeah, you join, uh, you go to the functional field of X. And here you have also an interest in an interest in zero cycle of degree one is just the generic point of X. Okay. So generic point. Well, and now we know that uh, the difference it's a zero cycle of degree zero, so it is trivial uh, on X L. And also, if you spread out uh, this um, equality, then you have uh, uh, the following. So if you consider the Chow group of dimension of x, x cross x, uh, then you're, you can write the generic point corresponds to the diagonal, and then uh, uh, the little x corresponds to this cycle. And then the fact that it's zero when you go to the generic point tells you something for the difference, so Z, where uh, Z is supported, is supported on D cross X with D of codimension at least one. So I can write codimension one. Okay, so if it holds, we will say that, uh, so, let me call this decomposition star. And we will say that uh, X has integral Chow decomposition of the diagonal. Of diagonal. Well, these kind of decompositions uh, it was already considered by Bloch and Schrinivers, for instance, but for the, with the multiple here. And here it's important that really we consider the integral decomposition. Uh, well, uh, it turns out that uh, actually for smooth varieties, um, the zero cycle uh, we choose is uh, the only one to check. Okay. So, uh, X smooth. Then, well, smooth uh, meaning that, um, well, yeah, means uh, smooth and uh, proper, all okay. Then X is universally CH0 trivial. If and only if there is a decomposition, star. Okay. Uh, well. And this is actually very important for the, to get uh, the following consequences. Could you read from here if I write uh, here? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, now the properties of C0 trivial varieties. So consider again a variety of a case of smooth. Uh, and um, so say proper projective. Universally C is zero trivial. Then, let me start with K, the case K equals to C, just by uh, psychological reasons, probably, because the second case will be a more general one. So, in the case of complex numbers, so the artin Mumford invariant of X is trivial. Uh, and also, uh, if you if you prefer a brown group, it's also trivial. 
And if you prefer the higher dimensional cohomology, uh, unrefined cohomology groups, they are also trivial. Sorry, maybe I'll write it here. And uh, H are unramified with some torsion coefficients, uh, also trivial at for I, I at least one. And all these um, properties could be generalized at, as it was done by Merkuriev. So you consider more generally uh, any cycle module over the field. So if M um, is a cycle module, so in particular uh, the unramified cohomology, you obtain them in this way, is a cycle module over K. Then you cannot have non-trivial unramified elements universally uh, uh, corresponding to the cycle modules. Then for any extension L over K, extension. So the cycle module is a functor on the fields by definition. So you can evaluate it on L. And also you can evaluate it on the function field of X over L. And there are residues here. So you can define also the non-ramified uh, elements. And then you have here a natural map, and it's uh, an isomorphism. So you have nothing on non-trivial uh, here, only elements coming from the base field. OK. Uh, well, uh, now let me explain the specialization properties of, uh, of the universal C0 triality. OK, uh, so specialization properties. Well, first we will consider a local context. So in a local context, you want to take a discrete valuation ring. So let me call it A, discrete valuation ring. Then you consider. Uh, it's residue field and then the field of fractions. I then consider X over A, which will be proper and flat. No more assumptions, in particular, no assumptions on the regularity of this whole space. Okay. Uh, let me call the special fiber Y and the generic fiber by X. Uh, so the key point here is that in this situation you have a specialization homomorphism between the child groups of X and it goes to the child group of Y. Uh, and um, so here this um, map is relatively easy to construct because Y uh, is just defined as a principal divisor uh, on the total space and in particular you don't need to read the whole book of Fulton but just uh, 20 first pages. And then you know that uh, how, how to construct this. Okay. Well, okay. Now let me explain the proposition. So assume. So it will be proposition four. Assume first that X. Um, so X is a generic fiber, okay? So X is smooth and universally C is zero three. And this is actually the smoothness hypothesis is not necessary. So uh, you, uh, alternatively, you can assume that exists a resolution of singularities, a resolution such that the resolution is the universally C is zero three. So no problem with smoothness here. And also the second assumption is to assume that exists a so wise integral. Sorry, wise integral. So and exists a, a resolution um, F. So Z 
is smooth, uh, but rational to wipe, uh, proper, uh, such that the map is universally CR0 trivial. So this is very important. So, uh, and also assume that uh, and that Z has a zero cycle of degree one. So then you have a specialization of this property. So uh, the fact that it holds for X means that it holds for Z. Okay, so the conclusion. So then uh, Z is a universally CRT logic. Okay. Uh, well, I will also give an alternative, an alternative version, uh, which is a more geometric statement. Sorry? So you can look at the diagram just uh, on the upper board. They are generic and special fiber of some space. Okay, so X degenerates into Y, and then you want to uh, use uh, to see how this is property uh, specializes. So let me call it for prime. So in the condition I, you just change it by I prime, saying that over an algebraic closure of uh, the field of fraction, you have a universally CR0 trivial variety. Okay. Or alternatively, for x tilde of an algebraic closure, uh, you get for uh, the second one, you just add that the field is algebraically closed. The residue field is algebraically closed. So then the condition of having a zero cycle of degree one is not really necessary. And then you have the same conclusion. Okay. Well, this is for local uh, specialization proposition. And let me uh, give a global one. Uh, so uh, let me formulate it over a field of a characteristic uh, zero, algebraically closed. But you can also take a field of positive characteristic, uh, but um, uh, it's, well, for our purposes, it's enough. Well, consider a global family. So a global family will be a family X to B, just a map uh, which is dominant and projective. So this global uh, statement uh, will be for the property of the decomposition of the diagonal. So assume that you have a point in B, okay, such that um, the fiber at this point has no decomposition of diagonal. So I still keep it like this, just for short, okay? Has no decomposition there, okay? Uh, then the same property holds for a very general point. Then for B in B of K, very general. The same conclusion for the fiber. Okay. B uh, in no condition. So B. I mean, if for finite type of K integral, say. Could be single or whatever you want. Yeah. If you want integral, just to speak about a family, uh, be a finite type. On smoothness, no. Well, no. Actually, um, 
well, I didn't want to discuss this. You want the, the diagonal of, this, of the map to exist as a cycle. So you don't want some emerged components, so th very, very weird things. But in the case, we will apply these holes, okay? So uh, not very weird, the, the correct. And of course, flat works, yeah, that's fl flat uh, certainly works. Uh, well, now I guess that I have time to explain uh, the proof of the proposition four, just to explain how, wh what is behind, and to, uh, to work with the definition. Okay, so proof of proposition four. So because we have a discrete relation ring, so the proposition is here, okay? Have a discrete relation ring, so it's often useful in the beginning to assume that the ring is considered. So let's do this. Uh, so first, the case A Hansilian. Okay, then we have a lemma which is uh, proved just in one line. Uh, so if you consider a cycle, a zero cycle on Y, so this is a notation for the group of zero cycles. Uh, and uh, I suppose that it's uh, supported on a smooth locus of Y. Supported on Y smooth. Then uh, the image of this zero cycle uh, is zero in the child group of Y. Okay. So the proof. So here is uh, why we assume that A is Hansilian, because you have a, because uh, X, and y, uh, X and Y are the same as in proposition four. I wrote proof of proposition four. So, um, uh, okay, because A is Hansilian, then uh, you can lift uh, your zero cycle, uh, Xi, to X, because it's, suppo it's supported on a smooth locus. Okay, A Hansilian, Xi lifts to Xi1. Uh, zero cycle of degree zero, yes, yes, zero cycle. Uh, of degree zero, thank you. Of course. Um, okay. And now we have, a, as a, I re recalled uh, before, so we have a specialization map from X to Y, which is constructed precisely in such a way that the lift, the lift Xi1 goes uh, to Xi. But this one is zero by assumption. So like this, you see that actually just uh, knowing that um, the child group of X itself is trivial is enough. Is trivial as uh, you see. Uh, and so this implies that uh, Xi equals to zero. Okay. Uh, well, this is for, uh, for the lemma. And now let me explain the proof of um, the proposition and actually I want you to do it uh, just to show that the assumption on F is actually important, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the Yes. No, no, it's a resolution, so sorry. I mean that the Z is smooth uh, and by rational. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right, yeah. Uh, well, um, the way I will prove it, okay, the way I will give you, uh, I will prove it, it will be for this mus. But I guess that uh, you can argue differently, to, slightly differently, to prove something more general. But now I will give a proof, because it's a short one, to just for Z. So. So indeed, the first uh, 
something I wanted to say. Uh, so, general case. Uh, well, uh, because uh, these smooth. Then we saw that what you actually want to prove is that uh, enough. So enough to prove that the generic point uh, minus x um, is trivial in the child group of z over the function field of z, which is the same as the function field of y because it's birational. Uh, here x is a zero cycle of degree one. of degree one, and because we have a moving lemma for zero cycles, we can may, may assume that x is also actually in the open, which is f minus one of y smooth. Okay. Now somehow you want to produce a situation uh, with um, Hensilian discrete relation ring, uh, and uh, which takes care about of this uh, zero cycle. So to do this, um, you can see that the following discrete relation ring. So let me put B, uh, the local ring of the whole space at eta. Uh, well, probably I had to assume that I had to assume that Y is geometrically integral. Well, um, and uh, well, anyway, it's a discrete relation ring uh, this case, and then I take the completion. That is a generic a point uh, of uh, Z. Also, I can view it as a generic point of Y as a point of my whole space. Okay. Uh, so, well, let's see what is the picture. So we have B, the residue field is K of Y. Uh, the field of fraction, I will call it F, is just a definition. Then we have um, here uh, the, the space which I extend to B. I have y over its function field, and also uh, f, and also z, the one I'm interested in, and also here I have just x over, sorry, um, over f. Now here I have my zero cycle eta minus x, which goes to some cycle xi1, xi, sorry, on y, and because of the lemma, now we are over Hensilian discrete relation ring. Uh, and the assumption was uh, that um, the generic fiber has trivial CH0, so this one is still universally CH0 trivial. And so it tells you that by lemma, uh, xi equals to zero. And uh, now uh, we see that the assumption of f on f is important because we know that the image of this cycle uh, is trivial. And so this implies, because of the f is universally C0 trivial, uh, that uh, the difference at a minus x is trivial, and so it is what we wanted. Okay. So now if you do not like uh, manipulations uh, with cycles on the blackboard, so, and if you use this moment to sleep, then I can, uh, I can suggest you to wake up and to listen uh, how to apply these uh, things to quartics. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sorry? Yeah, I mean, he, here, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, what will I do? Probably. Well, in this way, we accomplished the first step, uh, meaning that we uh, discussed the invariance we will use. Now we have two things to do, is to construct a, a family and uh, to find some uh, bad members of this family. 
So constructing a family in uh, this case is uh, uh, quite easy. So, um, okay. So the family of cortex is straightforward. You just take as for B the projective space which parameterizes coefficients, right? You have finitely, you have finitely number, um, some projective space of some dimension. One can compute what is this, parameterize. coefficients of the quartix and P4. And then, then you produce uh, the corresponding family X over B, family of quartix. Okay, well let's, now let's produce a, a bad quartic. So recall that we have a, a variety of artin Manford, which is a double cover defined like this. So here you have a square, and then you have a, a polynomial which is homogeneous and of degree four. So this looks uh, pretty much as a quartic, but it is not. Uh, so there is a, one problem here, just one coefficient. So usually I ask also here the third question, so what will you do to, to produce a quartic here? Cheat. How? This is too complicated, this parameter T. Yes, yeah, so Mark, uh, thank you very much. So the, the <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the most maybe uh, easiest solution is to just to take some square here and let me call it Y. Now it's indeed a quartic. And uh, the good th thing about taking just a zero is that uh, Y is birational to Artin Manfred. Because you just check at taking Z0 equals to 1, and then you have no difference between this variety and the variety of Artin Manfred. But unfortunately, it's singular. Uh, but uh, by doing blowing ups, you can construct a resolution. So it's proposition 6, I guess. So there exists um, a resolution Z to Y which is a resolution. A dimension is three here. Uh, so resolution, um, uh, which is a F, uh, which is universally C0 trivial F. Universally C0 trivial map. So this is done just by blowing up, not one, but several times. Uh, well, you see that the variety is uh, um, smooth, and then you apply the first proposition on fibers to show that the map is universally series zero trivial because you understand the exceptional divisors. Uh, well, and now the consequence is that um, you have a, here a non trivial torsion because Z is birational to Artin Manford and smooth. So for the uh, non-trivial invariance, we have nothing to do, just use certain effort. And in particular, it implies that D is not universally CSG trivial. This is probably by proposition, what, three? Yeah. Because if it's where, it will force this invariant to be zero. Well, now let's uh, consider how to put uh, these uh, things uh, into the specialization context of uh, the two uh, specialization propositions. Let me just call M in B point corresponding to Y. So Y is a quartic, so it gives you a point. Okay. 
So let's discuss examples of quartics of x4 and 4 smooth uh, knots of C, smooth not uh, universally CHD retrieval. So as a consequence, not stable rational, uh, not even retract rational. So how to produce such examples? So let's produce one and uh, even more. So one example. So the way to do it is to consider your parameter space, which I call B. So we have a point M corresponding to the bad quartic Y, which is actually defined it over Q bar, because uh, the artin manfort variety is defined it over Q bar. Then you can consider a line through M, a line, which is also defined it over Q bar. And uh, I can take it in such a way, the generic point, so here, sorry, I have several times annotation eta, but I guess, hope it's clear from the context. What does this mean? So that the aquatic is smooth. Just take a line which is not entirely uh, contained in the locus of uh, uh, singular aquatics. Then, so we can apply the proposition for prime. Why? Because I can take as a ring R the ring, local ring of L at, in eta. So we know that um, this variety is a generic fiber and then the special fiber will be Y uh, with this uh, resolution which is universally C0 trivial map and we know that this variety is not universally C0 trivial. So this proposition implies that X at bar is not universally C0 trivial. You can still read, um, remember that for prime was for, uh, for algebraic, algebraic closure for x, with, if you compare it with proposition 4. So let me, let me say how to, how to uh, get even more. So even more. So if you take um, a point B over, which is a point on a line, but which is not defined over Q bar, then such a point um, defines an embedding of uh, the generic point of the line to C. Identifying somehow the fiber at B to the geometric generic fiber. So via this embedding, you get that X B is not universally CR0 trivial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, how to? What should we do to get to get a very general quartic? So to get a very general quartic, we can apply the global pro specialization proposition. Okay. So still examples of uh, quartics. So a very general. So now what we got is that we have a X B a fiber which is so smooth and uh, not universally CR0 trivial. Because it's smooth, this means that no decomposition of the diagonal. And now you apply the proposition 5, which tells you a very general member, a very general. XB has no decomposition of diagonal because the very general will be smooth, 
then you have a not universally C03. You can also uh, do a different argument here, also using Y, but it's a little bit more subtle. So also I promised examples of a Q bar, so it will be, it will be the last example uh, we'll discuss. So how will you get an example of a Q bar? So of a Q bar. So what will you do is that you say, okay, I have my, what was important here is to construct this uh, Z to Y, where Y was defined uh, over Q bar. So this map is defined over some finite extension, so let's spread out it over some spec of ring of integers. Uh, so there exists um, an open in uh, some ring of integers of number field. and a uh, map from z to y so map is not curvy to y to u uh, so which extends the map on the geometric generic fiber uh, such that for any point point of u you have uh, that uh, first the fibers here for the map uh, so have same types of fibers as for the generic for uh, as for the generic point, and in particular is a university C of zero trivial map. And also, you may assume that uh, there is so this time you want some cohomological invariance, so you take a tal cohomology, uh, and um, so what one may assume here is that there is a torsion um, here, because it, it was actually two torsion for the generic fiber. And then similarly, so what you get, probably I write it just there, sorry, similarly, uh, any smooth uh, quartic which is defined over Q bar uh, which specializes to one of these ones specializing to uh, Y as Y as bar is not uh, universally CH0 trivial. So it really allows you to produce examples of a Q bar, and uh, even it's more explicit than the previous examples because you know that you, what you want to take is something which specializes to some of these examples. Okay, so now could you please open the projector? So this is all I wanted to discuss for quartics, and let me just finish with uh, a couple of comments. Well, we have these three steps, and uh, well, we discussed the invariants uh, that we use. Um, so let me comment on the second and on the third steps. Well, for the second step, uh, so essentially the invariants we used uh, were related to the Brow group. But also one can use the differential forms. So these were used uh, by Tatara following the construction of color. Uh, and, um, here is very important that the variety Y has mild singularities. So if you have your favorite variety such as uh, BJ and you want to specialize it to something, then you have to care if, you, if your result is singular, then you have to care that it's not so much singular to have this resolution which is universally C0 trivial map. And this is, well, it's uh, not maybe easy to produce such examples. Uh, and also in this third step, for really producing a specialization, well, for quartic it was easy. Just let it, let's take a quartic and then we have immediately a family. But in some cases it could be actually tricky. So in particular, so let me go back to the list of examples here. So Claire Vazin, she proved that um, 
Uh, such a double cover can be specialized to an Artin Manfred double cover which has 10 nodes. So this more or less tells you that the nodes can be smoothed independently, but it's, uh, that's, that's an argument. And also for conics, well, actually, um, if you stay, uh, if you want to produce a family staying and working with schemes, then it could not work. That what actually what they did is they used some stacks constructions to produce a specialization. Uh, okay, so let me go back to comments. Uh, okay, so if you still want to uh, produce some more examples. Well, uh, there are some other examples of varieties Y with higher dimensional non-trivial uh, normified cohomologies. Uh, so for I at least three, so they were produced by Kolyotelen and the younger rand for I equals to three, and then by Asak to, for higher I's. But now the coefficients of this Y are quite uh, complicated, so they're quite unbalanced. So the question would be uh, what can be specialized on it, so how can one run the step three? So uh, I said everything I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so the question was, I guess it has that you don't have a microphone. The question was, what, which of these quartics are not uh, unirational, right? Uh, so there are some particular quartics. Uh, if, um, well, I can probably write an equations, uh, and that you can probably find it in the original article by Skowski and Manin, where by some geometric method they prove that they are unirational. Like you have some particular surface, then you have some tangent space, etc. But in fact, uh, well, let's, for, as for I, I found, it's more or less the same, the only one, um, the only method to prove that they're unirational. And um, uh, I actually don't know, so we, we're not thinking if this particular unirational quartic is stable rational or not. It does this uh, fit in this, but if you give me a quartic, there is uh, this argument for over, um, over Q bar, which tells you which precise quartic is not uh, like retract rational. Uh, but if you give me one, I probably uh, I'm, I won't be able to say if it fits in this method or not. Okay. And for union rational, so there are some precise uh, uh, equations, but uh, oh, that's it.